Afternoon folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What I thought we'd do this morning real quick is we would discuss Dutch ovens for a minute because there's a lot of misconceptions out there about Dutch ovens and there's also some things that you need to know if you're looking to buy a Dutch oven. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about some of those things with you today on a short video. Now first of all, let me remove a lot of misconceptions right now and tell you that this Lodge pot right here with no legs on it and just a rounded dome lid is a true Dutch oven. Okay, This is a true Dutch oven. This is what was used in the Netherlands and imported to the UK in the early 1700s and was first used in the colonies as a Dutch oven. And it was called a Dutch oven because the Dutch had the best casting process to make these cast iron pots. It was not until later in colonial America that A, legs were put on the bottom of that pot to hold it up above the coals, and B, that Paul Revere, who is credited for inventing this rim around the lid to hold coals on the lid, was actually created. So in all actuality, this is a colonial oven. This is a true Dutch oven. And this piece here is a combination of the two in a new anodized aluminum type material instead of cast iron. So now that we've got the historical part of this out in the open and we've got the misconceptions of what a Dutch oven really is, because a Dutch oven is called a casserole dish in the Netherlands or in the UK, and casserole is the French word for pot. So this is a Dutch oven. This is a colonial camp oven. And a lot of people would tell you just the opposite. But this is a camp oven because it doesn't have any legs. And this is a Dutch oven. And that's not true. Okay? So now that we've got that distinction straightened out, let's talk about advantages and disadvantages of these three. And then we're going to talk about how to pick a good Dutch oven. So in my mind, you can see this is the most used of the three that are sitting here. Now, I haven't had this one as long, but I've had these two for quite some time. And this smaller one gets a lot more use in camp with me, with no legs on it, and a lid that you have to actually turn upside down if you want to put coals on it. It's a lot more use than this bigger 10-inch Dutch oven. And it's not really because of the size, necessarily. Where I live in eastern woodlands, it's windy where I live in Ohio most of the time. Anybody who's been to the Pathfinder will tell you it is wind driven out here. So these legs that are on the new, what everybody calls the Dutch oven, are really not long enough to get that pot above the coals very far or high enough in high winds where you're pushing air to those coals and driving heat to them to keep from burning your food unless you're using briquettes. I don't use briquettes when I'm camping, I use wood. So if you're using wood charcoals, hardwood charcoals underneath this pot, it's a little difficult to cook something in here like a bread or some type of a batter mix that you're making and not burn the bottom of it or scorch the bottom of it because the legs are not really high enough. So you end up taking some kind of a trivet or some rocks or something else and lifting this thing up further away from the coals to give yourself a couple more inches anyway. So if I'm going to have to do that anyway, might as well just take this because I can lift this up off the fire just as easy. Put it on a set of fire irons, put it on a grate, whatever the case may be. As easy as I can carry a second piece that I might have to have for the Dutch oven. Now that's not to say I don't like Dutch ovens. I love them. We're going to cook in Dutch ovens. We're going to do some Dutch oven cooking. I love cooking in Dutch ovens. Don't get me wrong. But for a single person camp, you could get away with something smaller than this if you wanted to carry a Dutch oven. But something like this is pretty much ideal for you. You can cook anything in this that you can cook in that Dutch oven, I guarantee you. But I tend not to hang Dutch ovens. 95% of the time, I won't hang a Dutch oven. I'll put it directly above the coals. If I'm going to hang something, I'll use some type of a cook pot or a bucket for that. So that's the advantages in my mind of the actual Dutch oven over a Dutch oven. Now, the advantages to the Dutch oven or obviously you have a convenient place to put coals on top of that that if you lift the lid off to inspect what's inside you're not going to spill ash and coals and things like that inside 
here where you don't have that advantage really with this because once you flip this over because you want to put coals on top of it it's a lot more difficult to get this off of it you've got to kind of pull it to the side and lift it up with a pair of pliers you don't have to do that with a dutch oven so there's a lot of advantages to this so don't think just because i'm saying i like this better <coughs> means that the dutch ovens jump because they're not they're great the other advantage to the dutch oven is you could use the top of this Dutch oven really as a skillet. You don't have that advantage with this one either. You need to carry a separate skillet, some type of a tin sheet or something like that. But this is really shallow enough you can almost use it for a skillet. And most of the time, I don't cook things that I have to flip with a spatula. So I don't really have to get that flat of a surface to be able to get under it with a spatula. I can just cook it in here. If it's bacon or something like that, if it's eggs, it's easy enough just to flip grease on it with a spatula. It's easy enough just to turn it and slide it out of there. It'll come out easy enough. But the advantage to this is you have that cooking surface. And then, of course, you've got the bale. And the bale can be an advantage. It can also be a disadvantage if you spill this stuff. Or if you're hanging it and it gets off center or something happens to where it flips over on you, no fun. Been there, done that. That's why I generally don't hang a Dutch oven. So those are the advantages of the Dutch oven. You've got quite a few. Now let's talk about this critter for a minute because this is kind of a newfangledy thing here that I haven't even tried very much yet. I've used it like one time. And I want to cook with it a lot more because I'm interested to see how it works. This is an anodized aluminum Dutch oven. And it has a concave lid. It has a nice smooth surface on the inside. It doesn't have any legs. So again, you're going to set this on something, whether it be a trivet or whether it be rocks or a grate. Whatever the case may be, you're going to set this on something to cook. It does have a bale on it. It does have a lid with a rim that you can put coals on top of. And because it's aluminum, it weighs one-third the amount of the same 10-inch Dutch oven in cast iron. So there's a whole lot left. I mean, this thing is like carrying nothing to me. Yeah, there's some weight here. It's pretty heavy duty, but compared to this, it feels like there's no weight at all. So I can see where this could have lots and lots of advantages, even over something like this, because this is fairly heavy too. This has a lot of versatility in my mind. Now, there's going to be a lot of arguments out there about cooking in aluminum versus cast iron, heat transfer, heat evenness, and all of those types of things. And I've read lots of stuff about people who cook in these aluminum Dutch ovens. And there's probably as many people that swear by the aluminum ones as there is that swear by the cast iron. In my area where there's a lot of wind, that's where aluminum is going to become the problem because it's such a high conductor of heat and heat transfer that it will cool down faster in a wind than cast iron is going to. So that would be the disadvantage of this aluminum over cast iron in my mind. But there's so many advantages to this. I'd find a place tucked out of the wind if I had to to cook with this, if I wanted to carry it, because it's very, very lightweight. You can see that the bale handle is connected on opposite sides. We'll talk about that in just a minute, which makes it pretty stable. It's got a nice heavy-duty lid lifter on it. It's got a nice flat bottom in the lid like a normal American-style Dutch oven does, and it's got the rim around it. So this thing, to me, is a win-win over just about anything but I haven't had a chance to play with it enough yet to talk intelligently about it, so the time will come. So now, let's quickly talk about going out and buying one of these Dutch ovens. So I've decided that I like the American style Dutch oven. I like that pioneer cowboy style of cooking, and I want a Dutch oven for my camp. And bear in mind that even Horace Kephart said, something like this is limited to conveyance. If you don't have a way to pack this thing around except your back, you ain't carrying this dude. This thing weighs a bunch. Probably weighs a good 10 pounds. Now, on top of the lid, it says number 10. That means it's a 10-inch Dutch oven. This one happens to be a Lodge. Lodge is about the only brand of cast iron that I buy. I just think it's good quality. It's a long-standing U.S. company. I like my cast iron made in the U.S. if I can get it, for sure. I wouldn't buy it if it wasn't. That's rule number one. And, like I said, Lodge has a good reputation. So let's talk about these Dutch ovens. So I walk in the store and I'm going to buy one of these Dutch ovens. <clears throat> First thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at these legs. Right after I make sure it says Lodge on it and made in the USA. I'm going to look at these legs. And what I want to know is, 
are the legs hollow or are they solid? If they're hollow, you're going to get dirt packed in there, and when the dirt gets packed in there to get moisture in there, you're going to get rust in those legs. Sooner or later, you're going to break them off. So you want your legs to be solid. The next thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at this Dutch oven and make sure that the inside of it is nice and smooth, that there's not any bumps or humps or divots out of it from the casting process or anything like that, because even a company like Lodge could possibly have one slip by that's not perfect. So there's nothing wrong with looking at what you're buying. If anybody tells you different, tell them, hey, you know what? I didn't buy a car without driving it. I'm not buying a piece of cast iron without looking at it. Make sure that thing's smooth on the inside. Look at the wall thickness all the way around that cast iron and make sure it's the same. Again, casting process can have issues sometimes, and you could have a thinner area in the wall somewhere than the other place. That's going to make it weak. It's going to give you a failure mode that you don't want. So make sure that's good to go. Your bale should be connected one on one side and the other on the opposite side. That way when you lift it up, it hangs even. If both of these bales are on one side, this thing's going to tilt one way or the other on you. You don't want to be wearing your food when you're carrying this thing away from the fire because it tilts over on you. And you don't want your food to fall out of it if you're hanging this thing for some reason over the fire to cook it and you tilt it somehow, you don't want the thing to flip all the way over and dump your food in the fire either. Make sure you got a good heavy duty bale on that thing that's closed up good and it's offset on both sides. Look at your lid, same story, make sure the inside of this thing is really nice and smooth, especially if you're going to cook with it. Make sure it doesn't have too much detail on this lid because you really need to keep this cleaned out of ash and soot and things like that. And any decorations that you have on top of this Dutch oven can be places that that stuff will pack into and help to start rusting your Dutch oven lid. So you really want to make sure that the least amount of writing on that thing, the better. This just says Lodge number 10. I can live with that. Again, make sure that the wall thickness around things good. Make sure that handles on there good and solid. Make sure you got a good smooth surface. And then make sure that that lid fits that Dutch oven perfectly. You should be able to spin that lid just like that, and it shouldn't hang up or bind. It shouldn't be too sloppy when you go side to side with it, because each lid is made for the Dutch oven it was casted for, and sometimes they can get mixed up. So you want to make sure that this lid is actually supposed to be on this Dutch oven, and you can turn it around freely, and it doesn't bind, because when you're cooking in this Dutch oven and you've got coals on top of here, you're going to want to turn the lid and turn the pot so that you get even cooking throughout the surface of whatever food you're cooking inside of here. So if this thing sticks when you try to turn it, it's just going to be a pain in your tail end. So you want to make sure that that thing freewheels. So that's pretty much the things you want to look for in a Dutch oven. Now, a lot of these Dutch ovens are going to come and they say they're seasoned. Even if they say they're seasoned, I wouldn't cook in it right away. I'd season it myself first. It's a pretty simple process. Take this thing to the house. Turn the oven on 400, 425, something like that. Take this Dutch oven apart. Get yourself some olive oil. And I always use olive oil on all my stuff. Get you a rag. Wipe this thing really good down with olive oil. Inside now, on the whole surface of this thing. Do the same thing with the lid. If you're doing this in the house in your oven, make sure you put something underneath here because you got oil in here. It's going to drip. Put that dude down. Put the Dutch oven on top of it. Shove it in the oven and leave it in there for a half hour, 45 minutes. Pull it out, let it cool down. You're good to go. It's ready to cook in. If you're doing this in your campfire, you can do pretty much the same thing. Just take a trivet, stick everything on top of a trivet like this. Cook it the same way. You just leave it on there for a while. Get that baked in there real good, and you're ready to go. All right, so we talked about true Dutch ovens. We talked about the American style of Dutch oven. We talked about a hybrid type Dutch camp oven here that's made out of anodized aluminum. We talked about how to buy them and some of the advantages and disadvantages of them. There's none of these that I don't like. Um, I've used this one more, so obviously the more you use something, the more fond you become of it. Doesn't necessarily mean it's better, just means you're used to it. This is very good too. I love cooking in Dutch ovens. I haven't had a chance to mess with this one too much yet, but I'm really looking forward to it because I think this is going to be a great piece of gear. Time will tell during the cooking series. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. I thank you for joining me for this video today. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back to another video as soon as I can. Thank you, guys.